Hello, I'm Bernard Dan, the Editor-in-Chief of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. I recently wrote an editorial entitled Human Enhancement from Disability to Superability. And today I'm having a conversation with Nick Agar, a philosopher with a special interest in human enhancement and the bioethical implications of technological progress. Nick, thank you very much for doing this with us today. How would you define human enhancement? What does it mean to enhance a human being? And I don't believe that there turns out to be a single answer to that question. But, you know, basically, we all have different stakes in being human and in the human future. So I'd say that there were, in general, two kinds of approaches to enhancement. And there's one that's really sort of simple that just says, well, what does it mean to enhance? Well, it's to improve. And so that's what it is. I mean, you can enhance a knife by making it sharper. I mean, you can enhance a human by making that human being better in some respect that you've decided is a relevant measure of being a good human being. And of course, sort of a lot's going to depend on that. There's a big issue in the disabilities community, and that is this other approach which gives priority to human norms. So sort of in a way approaches the whole idea of the distinction between therapy and enhancement and takes its lead from, I mean, if you went to a doctor and asked for the doctor to help you, the doctor would probably say, well, you have to identify what ails you. You know, you you don't just turn up and say, I'm not perfect and I want to be better. I mean, no one would say, hi, doctor, please improve me. The doctor will say, sorry, I treat sick people. People who identify as disabled those people, they're people, and they basically inevitably, whenever you add anyone to the human population, they stretch our concept, and it's a good thing, of what it means to be normal. So I guess there's one that says enhancement is just improvement, and there's another one that says, well, it's no, I guess when you, if you go and you say, I have a sore throat, that's not enhancement. It sort of would be going beyond the norm. I want x-ray vision. That would be going beyond the norm for human beings. Okay, well, this invites us to reflect about norms. We know they depend on many factors that change with historical and social conditions. How robust are norms and can we actually use them as a guide? You can certainly recognise that there's huge amounts of variation and what it means to be, I guess, yeah, it sounds a bad use of the word, but to be a normal human being. When you encounter different human beings, your concept of normalcy expands. We certainly learn a lot from any expansion. So how could we define what it is to be a human being? It's a bit like the philosophical example of at what point do you say that someone's bald? Well, someone who's got absolutely no hair on their head is clearly bald. I'm heading in that direction. Probably I'm not there yet. And it's kind of vague. And I think that the whole concept of a normal human is vague. What about technology then? Many people associate human enhancement with the use of technology and novelty. I do think the concept of you know, what is to be human is very elastic. So some people, like many transhumanists, have an explicitly technological vision of our future. And they would say, well, one reason that I know I won't be human in the future is that I will have gotten rid of all of this human stuff and replaced it with superior technology. Some people have argued that we are some cyborgs already because many of us have come to depend on, say, computer technology, including smartphones, to perform human functions. Is this a useful perspective? I don't know. If you were to walk up and smash my iPhone, I I might think, well, maybe I'll get a better phone. But I wouldn't say, oh, that's like you physically assaulted me. I think there's a difference between uses of technology to alter our bodies and our brains and uses of technology to basically just work with what we have. I don't know, when I throw my phone away, I probably feel relieved. I don't feel like I've just chopped my foot off. There's a bit of me gone. I don't feel that I'm a cyborg in that sense. Which ethical questions do you think are most urgent in relation to human enhancement? So I think that there are so many different questions about our potentially enhanced future because there are so many ways 
in which we could apply technologies to ourselves. And, you know, it's going to require a lot of intense thinking. What do I want to preserve about myself? And what am I happy to give up? And I think maybe people will arrive at different things. When I think about my bond with my family members, I mean, I think of my frailties as part of that. I view them, my wife, my kids, as having some of the same frailties. And that sort of makes us able to have a bond. It's sort of part found in, oh, maybe in some cases in the things that we can do that are amazing, but also in the things that we can't do.